and uh, I will hand it over to you to get started whenever you're ready, Chair Upston. Thank you very much, Chuck. Good morning, everybody. I'm calling this meeting to order at 935. My name is Keith Opstead, and I am the chair of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture Public Art Committee. We're going to do a quick roll call to confirm committee member attendance. When I call your name, please unmute yourself and stay present. Commissioner Fritz Friedman. Present. Anthony Graham. Dr. Melinda Guillen. Present. Wayne Holton. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Abe Hughes. Commissioner Alessandra Moctezuma. Francisco M. A. Commissioner Imani Robinson. Dr. Anjun Park. Present. Thank you. And Dr. Denise Rogers. Present. Thank you very much. Thank you, your attendance has been noted. Also joining us today is Commission for Arts and Culture staff, including Chief of Civic Art Strategies, Christine Jones, Senior Public Art Manager, Chuck Miller, and Civic Art Projector Manager, Dr. Uh, Laura Bullock. Before we get into today's agenda, I'm gonna call on Chuck Miller to run down some of the guidelines for today's meeting. Uh, good morning, everyone. A uh, reminder that this is a Zoom webinar and members of the public may join the meeting as webinar attendees to provide virtual non-agenda and agenda comment in real time. A reminder to note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of the Zoom window to mute and unmute and turn the camera on and off. Please remember to stay muted when you are not talking and to unmute yourself when you speak. Please keep your chat window open at all times as you'll be using the chat to signal when you'd like to speak. Please refrain from using the hand raising indicator and instead type speak in the chat window for the record. And the chair will acknowledge requests in order. And finally, a reminder to please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling that you'd like to speak in order to comply with the Brown Act. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Our first agenda item is a non-agenda public comment. We will now move on to the, uh, the public was invited to submit public comment on agenda and non-agenda items via a web form accessible through the agenda and the commission's website. Members of the public may also join this meeting as webinar attendees. If members of the public have submitted comments in writing via the platform, staff will read aloud public comment submitted per city public comment protocol. I will call on Chuck to read aloud any non-agenda public comment or to call on any attendees who would like to provide comment. Uh, thank you, Chair Opstead. No comment was received in writing, and it looks like we currently have no attendees from the public. Excellent. Okay, we're going to move on to the chair reports. Uh, first off, as far as commission business goes, at the October commission meeting, the recommended panelists for all three upcoming public art projects, Hidden Trails Park, the Willie Henderson Sports Complex, and the Southwest Park were all approved. The RFQs for those projects are expected to be released this month, so be prepared to spread the word to your artist colleagues and creatives. Looking forward to continue working with you all. Our first action item is from the October 7th, 2022 Public Art Committee meeting minutes. I hope everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from the October 7th, 2022 meeting. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes as they are? If you would, please type speak on the chat window, and when I call on you, verbally state your name and make the motion. Please type speak in the chat. Excellent. Dr. Guillen? Hi, uh, Melinda Guillen. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Do we have a second? Wayne? I second the motion. Excellent, thank you very much. We now have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If you'd like to speak, please type speak on the chat window. Commissioner Friedman, were you gonna second or did you have a comment? No, I was gonna second. Actually. Appreciate it, thank you very much. You're welcome. I see no additional comments. So we're gonna go ahead and take a vote. I will call your name and you will respond out loud with a yay, nay, or abstain. And remember that you do not need to have been present at the October meeting to vote or discuss. Commissioner Friedman. Yay. 
Dr. Melinda Guillen. Yay. Wayne Holton. Yay. Dr. Anjun Park. Yay. And Dr. Denise Rogers. Yay. Excellent. And my vote is a yay. Thank you, Chuck. Please read any public comment for this item that was submitted in writing and call on any attendees that you would like to make uh, provide comment for this item. Uh, thank you, Chair Opstead. Uh, no comment submitted in writing and still currently no attendees. Excellent. Uh, as we look at the main agenda item for today, I'm really looking forward to the presentation for the schematic artwork proposal by uh, for Bear Park by Ingram Ober and Marisol Rendon. I'd like to call on Chuck to provide an overview of the public art process. Uh, thank you, Chair Opstead. Um, so this is just a uh, another kind of check-in and reminder um, for those of you who may be less familiar with the process. Uh, we are continuing to move forward with the Byer Park public art project. Um, and so we are currently at the step now where uh, the kind of in the middle of the screen here, artist creates an artwork proposal. So what you provided feedback on last month was their preliminary idea. And so now the artist is coming back to uh, coming back to this committee uh, to share how that idea has developed into a proposal uh, with respect to feedback they've received um, from Parks and Rec, from the design team, from this committee. Um, and the next step, which Lara will detail after the presentation, uh, will be to go out uh, to the general public to share the proposal. So um, stay tuned for information about that uh, uh, coming very soon. Um, next slide, please, Lara. So um, last month, the circle was around the blue square to the uh, left of the green square here. But now we uh, now, so the public art committee's role um, in this process is to provide feedback to artists in the schematic artwork proposal phase. And um, this proposal will come to this committee once further after we have had a chance to share with the general public and then uh, further develop the final proposal with that input. Um, uh, and this committee will take action on whether to recommend that the commission recommend the approval of the proposal. So for now, however, we're just going to be providing some additional feedback um, on the schematic proposal. Um, and with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to Lara to introduce Ingram. Just Ingram? Um, uh, or forgive me, I, I it looked like it was just Ingram on the camera. <laughs> Sorry okay. if I missed Marisol. <laughs> well, okay, so Ingram over is a San Diego-based artist, designer, and educator whose practice employs sculpture, installation, and performance to investigate systems, whether they be social, ecological, or material. He creates work that encourages viewers to consider how various systems affect their way of life through often humorous, sublime, and subversive forms. And Marisol Rendon is a San Diego-based artist as well, whose work focuses on the concept of illusion, revealing moments of self-deception through familiar materials. Working in design, drawing, sculpture, and installation, Rendon uses common forms as catalysts for memory and meaning. Both Marisol and Ingram hold MFA degrees from Claremont Graduate University, and they've collaborated on many public art projects um, for museums, as well as in the public realm. They have completed two public art commissions for the city of San Diego at the Bayside Fire Station and the South Crest Trails Park. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ingram to present. Did you, are you gonna use kind of our slides or so yeah, so if I could screen share, I'll okay. use mine, which are primarily the same, but I do have two updated renders. Um, so yeah. And uh, uh, thank you, everybody. It's good to see you today. Uh, Mani Soul apologizes that she couldn't be with us today. Um, uh, you know, it's always nice to have my more charismatic half here with me. 
Um, however, uh, she, she has a solo show opening up at Bread and Salt uh, next weekend on November 12th. We uh, have, um, well, we'll be at the gala and we're develop, delivering work to the New Children's Museum today for their auction for that. Um, and, and so anyway, our, our only way to get through the day today was to divide and conquer a little bit. So, so it's, it's just me. Let me uh, let's see. This pulled up. There, my computer didn't like full screen mode for a moment there, but uh, everyone has uh, a slide up that's our input and feedback currently. Yep. Excellent. Um, so uh, just before the meeting, I did sort of check in. Um, we've, we um, were just together very recently um, to go over the schematic, um, uh, or not the schematic, the uh, preliminary idea for the project. Um, and so today I just really wanted to focus on, on the input and feedback that we received uh, from that presentation and a number of other meetings uh, with community stakeholders and project stakeholders um, and really kind of focus in on um, uh, some of those things that uh, not necessarily have changed but have focused in um, and become more specific uh, moving forward in the schematic design phase. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I thought starting with the, the input and feedback is a, um, a, a good place to begin. So um, in the preliminary um, idea, um, we were still very much, um, we were presenting sort of a range of scale possibilities um, that was still based largely in incoming numbers for kind of budget analysis. Um, and at this point, um, we've focused in on uh, a size range for the project, uh, which has us at um, a 25 foot uh, total height for the piece. Um, and uh, that, that basically puts us in a range of having about a, a 12 foot uh, diameter um, at the base. Uh, with a light conical spread up to about a 20 foot, uh, 22 foot diameter before the final canopy canopy spread out to about a 30 foot uh, diameter for the very uh, top uh, perimeter of the structure. Um, one of the other um, elements that was really tied to uh, that scale choice um, is and has been uh, the choice of the tree. Um, that we would um, be working with. And, and at this point, I, I think there is still uh, some level of discussion and, and um, uh, believe we have an upcoming, uh, I'm not sure, possibly today or Monday, I, I wasn't sure, uh, meeting with an arborist. And I think we'll continue to zero in on that. Right now, um, our working species and the one that we're focused our efforts on mostly have is the uh, Catalina ironwood. Um, it's a relative of the desert ironwood, which was one of our initial um, species, which is an endangered species and relates very specifically to that area. Um, uh, with the idea that the Catalina ironwood would be a little bit more um, readily acceptable, uh, readily accepting the added moisture that we're creating sort of in the microclimate around the work. Um, uh, there's been uh, some community comment um, and, and a great comment um, relating to tree species and sort of the cultural narrative behind mesquite as well, um, which is of interest to us, um, but based on scale and uh, um, the, the speed of growth and of course that additional moisture element, um, the mesquite doesn't seem to be um, pragmatically our, our best choice moving forward. Um, so that was something that had come in. Um, um, so uh, we have, and I guess I'll just kind of go through these as bullet points and then um, we can look at some of the imagery that, that supports uh, um, some of what's happening. Um, there has been uh, some question and comment 
about uh, the structure's um, sort of functionality um, as far as like uh, containing the tree and maintaining the tree. And we just wanted to um, reiterate that it is uh, really intended to be a visual enclosure of sort of a volume of air mass uh, and not necessarily an enclosure for the tree. And obviously those two things are related. Um, so uh, the idea that uh, um, some initial pruning through the growth phases of that tree, um, uh, some initial pruning will help it move up vertically and sort of into that structure in, the, in a proper way, um, but that um, as it reaches maturity, we're very comfortable with that tree sort of taking on its natural um, growth um, um, tendencies. And if and when it pokes through the structure in certain places and emerges from the structure um, is, is not, not only okay, but we, we actually look forward uh, to right, some of those um, um, kind of natural interventions. Um, on to number three, um, we've been, um, there was a number of different recommend, recommendations for the height of, um, we're calling it a planter or a plinth. Um, so there's some recommendations on the height of that, which initially we were uh, recommending and suggesting as a six foot tall height. Um, and that height was initially based on sort of uh, considering li uh, limiting access to the artwork. In other words, the idea was um, to make the entire form less climbable, basically. Um, that six foot height and a slightly rounded edge we thought would, would deter kind of entry into the artwork. Um, as it's turned out uh, and through comment, there seems to be um, less concern uh, for that phase of things and a little bit more concern for uh, both maintenance access and kind of visual access. Um, and it um, and so with all of that in mind, um, we have adjusted the height of that concrete plinth uh, down to a four foot tall, um, which we, we think probably, um, which actually like visually will be better. Um, it actually will allow kind of visual access to the, the surface of that uh, for more um, individuals. And so we were happy to make that adjustment. Um, again, it was kind of a, um, uh, it was a, a pragmatic choice, um, you know, in the past we always, right, there's always those worries about, about climbing and about skating and things like that that come into hardscape. So really that six foot was, was for that purpose. So uh, at this point we've settled into the four foot tall. Um, along with that, um, I think it's important to um, also mention that when we refer to that structure as a planter, I think it often conjures up an idea of sort of a, a pot where there is a lip and a recess down to uh, the, the surface of the, the, the soil um, that the tree is growing up out of. Um, it is our um, current intention to really have the surface of that soil um, come to the very top edge of that concrete. So there's not uh, a recess or a place to collect uh, debris or, or whatnot that it, it is, um, yeah, it is, it, it will come to the surface. We are still kind of in some discussions uh, with the design team um, based on what the surfacing of that soil will be. Uh, the area around the tree is designated to have, um, uh, I believe it's just a, a basically a bark mulch kind of um, surface. And so uh, we are interested in having our piece of elevated soil reflect that. Um, however, for cleaning and maintenance, we're not certain that kind of loose bark mulch is, is the best uh, way to go there. And so um, there's still some discussion as to what that, that surface material uh, will be. Um, we have uh, finally a zoom, um, um, uh, located, zeroed in on uh, the source for our fogger head um, uh, equipment. 
Um, it is the same supplier that has uh, supplied a very similar system uh, that's currently in use at the San Diego Zoo. Uh, so we do have um, you know, a, a functional model in the area, uh, which is great. Um, it's been in operation for over a year currently without uh, having to clean or replace fogger units. Um, maintenance is something that has been um, a topic of conversation for this project and what kind of access is needed um, to, to clean and replace and maintain the fogger units. Um, uh, in the case of the zoo, they did purchase uh, an extra set of the actual nozzles. Um, so that they have them in stock to replace. But um, as of so far, um, the designer um, was not aware of any of the units having to be replaced uh, as of so far. It is a high pressure system, uh, which was um, not part of the understanding of our preliminary design. Um, and so uh, there will be a slightly larger control um, uh, enclosure for the control units before uh, it was going to be located over by the, it's still going to be located over by the phase two comfort station in the park, uh, but it will be a slightly larger enclosure because it will have to uh, house a pump um, and a hard water filter system as opposed to just controller units. Um, that uh, um, filter system uh, does have an annual uh, filter change, and uh, I believe the pump uh, calls out for an annual oil change, uh, or at least somebody to check uh, the oil on the pump unit. Um, so that's uh, some added maintenance uh, that's come into the, the project. Um, the, uh, in the community comments um, at the end of the last meeting, there was an expressed excitement with the idea that the water feature might, that, that there would be a water feature included uh, with the work and asked if the misters could face out from the structure for cooling. Um, and so although we, we will not be positioning the fogger heads to point out uh, specifically, um, it is important to know that um, they're not, the reason that I always refer to them as a fogger head and not a mister head is that they um, they really do provide an extremely fine atomization of water um, to the point where um, you, you really they they don't actually dampen uh, the surfaces that they that they um, uh, you know spray over or around and so. Um, uh, because of that very lightweight atomization of water, um, it does provide cooling, uh, but is not significantly wetting to the touch. Um, and um, although the those fogger heads will point in uh, towards the tree, uh, the very slightest of breeze, um, once they have gone off and filled that structure, will carry um, that fog and that atomized water and that sort of cooling effect. Um, out uh, from the structure. Um, and, um, you know, visually that's something that we look forward to. And hopefully um, as an experience, that's something that, um, that park visitors will also look forward to. Um, and so uh, that was um, uh, kind of the crux of our initial uh, feedback from the schematic design. Um, of course, we are moving very quickly through um, these different phases of, um, of proposal. And so, um, uh, we, we are already kind of working towards final, uh, design, um, because, I, well, because we have to. Um, and so, um, there are some things that are, um, have also kind of gone out for comment, um, in the meantime and are still being kind of considered, uh, some of that is uh, what the city and parks parks and rec will need for um, for access to the work. And so um, in our current version of this schematic proposal, uh, we do refer to um, the access um, to the artwork being provided by a degraded uh, um, granite uh, pathway. Mm -hmm. um, it's come to our attention that um, that the design team would prefer to go in a different direction with that. 
And so uh, that will actually probably um, has already uh, changed from this presentation to, um, uh, to a concrete pathway. Um, they're using a stained concrete um, uh, that, so basically we'll be, we'll be following with the, uh, the uh, sidewalk and pathway call out for the park that's, that's already around the work. Um, and part of that was just a matter of maintaining access. They uh, worry that the degraded concrete or the degraded, the degraded granite uh, pathways uh, often lose their ADA accessibility after, um, you know, after one or two rains or after one vehicle is tracked across them. So um, that is something that is changed from here. Um, let's see. So some of what, uh, so here were our initial uh, scale um, uh, proposals. So uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, we have uh, narrowed in on this 25 foot height at this point, which we are um, extremely happy with um, moving forward. Hello, Ingram. I, uh, yes. Apologies. Um, it looks like we're not seeing the slide advance on this side. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Let me let me reshare and see if that helps. There we, there go. we go. I think I think we're good now. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just gonna toggle back and forth between one slide and oh. So uh, did it just switch to the initial scale shifts or is yes. that- Yes, yes, okay. we're good. Okay, so, um, so we've settled in, I guess we'll go back to, um, so our initial scale shifts uh, had us in a range from 15 to 30 feet. Uh, we're extremely happy to, um, to see that, um, uh, through our budget analysis, we should be able to achieve uh, the 25 uh, foot um, height. Um, this one currently, this image shows that bottom plinth as a six uh, foot plinth. We're still working on updating all of our different wireframe imagery. Um, but these are the um, updated renderings uh, for the new structure. There has been a slight amount of simplification uh, to the top of the canopy uh, from the very first renderings. And of course, this shows uh, the uh, bottom plinth um, at, at the new four foot height, um, which um, I think is a little bit more inviting, a little bit less imposing. Um, and so we're actually really happy about that um, development as well. Um, these are some examples from the supplier of the fog system of their uh, systems um, in use. Um, the supplier that we're currently looking at is uh, Cool Fog. They're um, out of Palm Springs. Um, and again, uh, have supplied a system very similar to this to the San Diego Zoo. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's just uh, some ideas. I know in the last time we presented, there was kind of, we had these canned images of Mr. Heads that really showed more of a greenhouse wetting system. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of how that fog uh, doesn't fall. It actually rises and is carried on um, uh, the, the air currents uh, in the area. Um, and again, you can be in it without um, becoming wet. Uh, these are just some visual uh, examples of uh, the Catalina ironwood tree, uh, which again is our current uh, front runner as far as the uh, tree species. Um, and as I said, because we are moving quite quickly uh, at this point, um, initially um, it was looking as though um, because of material costs that uh, 316 stainless steel um, that we were initially talking about uh, to build the structure uh, was just going to be cost prohibitive to use. So we started, and in this project, we have budgeting 
um, analysis for, uh, and we're calling out for a galvanized uh, steel uh, square tubing structure. Um, moving forward from this point on, we're um, actually have achieved, we've, we've received some new information. Um, the galvanized steel is requiring um, some sort of coating method, whether that is uh, like a marine grade epoxy paint, um, or uh, we've been in um, communication with, um, with commission members, with Chuck in particular, who has made us aware of uh, another coating, which is referred to as a, a tenemic coating um, that we're looking into, but the current numbers on those coating systems actually puts us back in the range of considering uh, stainless steel again. Um, and so um, currently, uh, because we don't have certainty in that um, for this proposal, we have uh, left the galvanized steel um, as our, our material of choice for the structure. Um, but again, we'll, um, that, uh, that is something that is, is currently in development. We're, we're analyzing the different possibilities and it is looking, it's looking likely, I think at this point that we will be moving back towards uh, the stainless, uh, which was also the preference for um, a number of different members of the design team and was our initial preference as well. So uh, if we can do that, um, that'll be actually be something that uh, that's really exciting to us. Um, and then uh, of course, uh, besides the tree, uh, the fog and the structure, um, the base design will be a um, in uh, cast in place uh, concrete, uh, which we will be um, providing the um, the forms for, and uh, of course we'll be will be cast there um, on site. Um, and um, I think that um, I think that that covers most of the major developments that have come uh, since um, since the preliminary idea and. Um, yeah, I think that brings me to, to about the end of it. Um, I have a question, if I may. Um, and I'm sure you answered this, I must have missed it, but the galvanized steel and all that, um, the material that you're going to paint over it, I think you used the word paint, um, that's going to ensure uh, minimal rust, right? Or protection from the environment. Yes. So basically, um, if we do go with the galvanized option, um, the the project would be assembled into probably four different component modules uh, that then bolt together. They would be sent out to have them hot dipped and galvanized as a as a unit. Um, so there wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't have weld joints and things like that exposed at that point. Um, however. Um, the galvanization process is great for sort of protect, protecting the structural viability of it, um, but in a moisture rich environment, it, it does allow for the possibility of hazing. Um, and so um, we would be looking at, yes, doing a, a coating over the, the top of it. And that image on the right, uh, does that say to me, it's there's an internal lighting structure? Yes. Um, yeah, we are looking at um, uh, basically uh, sort of a ground level uh, plinth mounted landscape lighting that projects up into uh, the structure. It looks pretty. I like it. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Wanted to thank you so much for your presentation, Ingram, and I'm sorry Marisol was not able to join us today, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, have this as an opportunity for all of the members to ask comments, questions, clarification uh, about the schematic proposal. So if you'd like to, uh, to comment, please type speak in the chat window and I'll call on you. Anybody have any questions, comments, observations? Ingram, I wanted to compliment on, on the lighting of it, because that was one of the things I brought up last time at the last meeting. This really does help visually to understand that it won't be a, a magnet for, for you know, uh, being damaged. 
Uh, and I also appreciate the honesty and the transparency of the pricing with stainless steel. We understand that, that you know, right now in the current situation, the economy materials cost significantly more and sometimes trying to go with a less expensive, but by the time it's treated, you know, going back yeah. to the original, I, I thank you for being able to pivot and explain the process to everybody. No problem. No problem. Yeah. It, it, something that's actually been really, you know, I guess exciting to us. I mean, it, it does, of course, it, it is the more expensive option, but uh, like I say, as you know, as we've gotten towards it, it's it's been sort of a zero gain um, um, choice. So, so I, you know, anyway, I, I think we're getting close to where we need to be um, on on that. Um, yeah, Commissioner Friedman, did you have a comment? Yeah. I just saw uh, just a uh, question and observation, and that is um, these two images that I see in front of me, of course. And I'm sure it's just for the illustrative purposes, but I don't see the tree. Oh, uh, yeah. In this case, it is hidden by sort of the fog. It is in there a bit. This is showing it mm. as it would be more than likely, probably about three years into right its growth. Um, most of the trees that uh, will be going into the park, and indeed our tree, to give them the best possibility of survivability. Um, they usually go in. Um, we're we're looking at um, probably the largest size that that they really guarantee the the viability of, or not guarantee, but um, recommend the viability of, is in a 24 inch box uh, planter as they plant. And so what you're looking at in the those cases is usually a tree that's roughly six to eight feet um, in total height. And you know they they are small, so. You know, we will be looking at a um, uh, an artwork here that that will be developing over the next you know five to ten years as that tree uh, gains stature and really with the um, foliage uh, around it as well. Um, it's one of the things we've gone back and forth with a little bit on these renderings because obviously we don't have the actual site. Uh, mm -hmm. yet to, to, you know, take our setting images from. Um, and so I. Uh, it's one tree, right? Yeah, it's one tree. It will be one tree there. And um, I guess that is something else that we've been talking, uh, talking to the design team about. There was a comment about um, relocating the piece slightly. There's a drainage basin there that um, on our current site plan, we uh, have moved to the southeast uh, to be just sort of clear of uh, the beginning of the break for the slope for that. Um, there has been some comment about actually moving our tree from the back of that. And actually, I guess I can go up to the site plan while we talk about it, maybe. Um, I may have just broken my... Uh, my sharing feature here again. I, do you guys see the slides changing? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Um, so uh, it, the oval shape here is a drainage basin and those elevation lines are kind of a slope down to it. So we have, uh, we, we did shift slightly um, to be out of the plane of that. There has been some discussion with the design team um, based mostly on uh, ideas of maintenance access. Uh, to move uh, and recite the uh, the piece towards the the front of this uh, kind of triangular area here. Um, we've always discussed the work as sort of a discoverable experience um, towards the back. Uh, that's led to a discussion of um, uh, the fact that our tree and our structure will be the tallest thing on the site. Um, no matter where it's placed. And so there is some discussion as to how discoverable that will be. And I think we're changing our wording of that to some degree is that it's not necessarily in that case about being discoverable because especially at the be or, you know the, the first few years of this park, even if there are trees here, they're shown as their adult canopies, they're going to be, you know, not much more than a stick in the ground, uh, right? When they're first planted, so uh, they have to develop. Um, however, we are still interested. We we don't want 
necessarily the artwork to be this kind of entrance or gateway experience on the near near what we consider to be kind of the main thoroughfare into the park we do want to sort of spur off of that so we don't want to be hidden in the park but we do want it to be a place that's a little bit more quiet and a little bit more still even if that's just separated by 50 feet um, from the parking lot and whatnot at least um, at least then we are on a pathway that terminates at the piece as opposed to uh, running past it as more of a thoroughfare. And that type of approach is still important to us. So um, if, and we believe that the width of the path and changing to that concrete uh, pathway, uh, and then the choosing of lower planting here in front of it should um, allow for the access that um, the park service needs um, to, to be able to maintain the work and whatnot. And so we, we believe that we've found a um, uh, 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 a happy medium and a, and a compromise. So Ingram, actually, you bring up an interesting note I was going to ask. Um, mm -hmm. the, the budget for the horticulturalists to make sure that the tree is being appropriately watered, not overwatered, and so on and so forth. That's part of the, did you just say that that's being handled by the, the park authority? Um, so uh, honestly, I'd probably defer to um, uh, well, maybe to Chuck uh, for this one. It uh, in the um, as part of our work and contract, we will be developing a maintenance plan package uh, for the artwork, um, and so that will be included with contingencies for uh, what is to happen if the tree dies. You know that is a possibility. Um, and how that's to be handled. Um, and it is our understanding that at that point, all of those things will be um, um, coordinated through um, the Commission for Arts and Culture with that maintenance plan, um, whatnot. I mean, if thank you. Have anything okay. to add, that's Thanks so much, Ingram. Yeah. In Ingram, yeah. You hovering over the entrance to the park uh, with your icon. Perfect. Okay, so that, that's the parking yeah. area and the main entrance. Yes. Yep. And I didn't see any other walkways that would connect the parking lot uh, in order to be ADA compliant to the entryway to the sculpture. So um, this area here, this is all uh, current ADA sidewalk. Excellent. And then and then we will be spurring off of that. And 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 again, just recently, that discussion is probably uh, opening ours up. Uh, making our pathway a little bit larger. Uh, I believe it's nine foot that's required for vehicular um, traffic. And so that's something that, that they've wanted. So this will, uh, between now and final um, design, will more than likely be, be opening up to a nine foot um, pathway. Excellent, because that was one of the things on reviewing the the, the visual, uh, the mock-up is there was no pathway on there. I was trying to see no, how yeah. it was in comparison to the base of the sculpture. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, currently, yeah, currently that's not in our renderings. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments? If you do, please go ahead and type speak in the chat. And I wanna make sure that your opinions are acknowledged and heard. Okay, I'm not seeing any additional comments. Uh, once again, want to thank you so much for everyone's input and question. And thanks again to Ingram and Marisol for your presentation. Uh, Laura, can you provide an overview for the next steps for this project? Oh, and hold on. Uh, I'm seeing a Wayne Holton comment. I want to make sure that we get that. Wayne, did you have a comment? Yes, I just, I, I can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate them. I think it's been a, a nice development since uh, what we initially saw. And I especially like the lowering of the base to the four feet. I think that'll, you know, engage, like you said, uh, the viewer to the space, to the ground level um, a lot better. So anyway, nice progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Laura, you're going to go ahead and provide the overview for the next steps for this project. Yes, thank you, Keith. So, um, 
So the next steps, we're going to have uh, an artist open house, which is a chance for the larger public that maybe hasn't attended these virtual meetings and hasn't been able to engage with the project. Um, community members who are like vested in, in the area where Buyer Park will be. So San Ysidro and the greater San Ysidro, sorry, San Ysidro area. Um, so we're still coordinating a specific date for that, but it will occur in the winter of this month. So stay tuned for some updates on that. And then after that event, the artists will develop their final proposal, which Ingram referred to today. And then you guys will have another chance to see that final proposal and just kind of see how the project has evolved um, based on you know, the feedback that the artists have received from the community and you guys as well. So, and then after that, um, the exciting part of design, construction documents and installation eventually <laughs> will happen. So thanks so much. Hope you're muted, Keith. Sorry about that. Knew it would win me a Zoom without me messing up at some point. Uh, thank you, Laura. Finally, Chuck, would you please read any public comment for this item that was submitted in writing and call on any attendees that would like to provide comment for this item? Uh, thank you, Chair Opstead. No comment submitted in writing and uh, still currently no attendees. Thank you very much, Chuck. Uh, we're going to move on to the reports. I'd like to call on Christine Jones to provide the staff reports. Thank you, Chair Ofsted, and good morning, PAC members. So let's go to the next slide. So Park Social probably doesn't need an introduction to this group, but just as a reminder for, for the general record that this is a citywide initiative introducing social specific public art into San Diego's park system. Um, and originally it was an effort to support artists during the pandemic and make them part of the city's activation of park spaces. So Park Social Initiative actually concludes November 20th. So we're, we're getting down to um, just the final couple remaining artist projects and artist activations. So let's go to the next slide. So just as a reminder, uh, we do have a project in Council District 5 going on. So Floating Photo Studios. This is a project by the team of Beck Haberstrahl and Katie Garrettlin. And it really is offering a community photo lab for park goers to fly kite pinhole cameras and really learn about photography and explore the concept of aerial photography and um, questions about surveillance. So this project's taking place at Hilltop Community Park. Actually, it's going on tomorrow. So, you know, I think tomorrow's going to be nice. So if you have a chance from 11 to 2 p.m., uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., um, head out there to the park. They'll be there again on November 13th, which is a Sunday. So um, I've been out there. It's really, really fun to fly kites. Um, it's been a really long time. So I highly encourage you guys to engage with this project and meet the artists out there if you haven't already. Um, let's go to the next slide. So um, just as a, just a visual recap, we've had a, a number of projects that have just concluded for Park Social. So reading to strangers and the, um, as well as um, that, that project's by Allison Weiss, a project by Keenan Harston called Honeycomb Harmonies just concluded. Brian and Ryan's um, residency at, at um, Chelios Lake, their park social Chelios Lake project has concluded, as well as Mario Mesquita's Paleta's Communal Social Club just concluded. Um, we do have some projects that are still going on though, in addition to the Floating Photo Studios. So if you haven't been out, um, please check out Barely Touching installation, tribute to Palateros installation still happening, Locked Groove. And so if you haven't seen those installations, they'll be on view for a couple more weeks. So please head out there. Um, let's go to the next slide. Oh, um, before we get to this slide, one more thing to just put on your calendars is the last actual activation for Park Social is actually happening November 19th. And um, as you might recall, Timothy Murdoch's project is kind of, it's a dance performative work called Walking the Wall. And so that's basically a process where dancers and the artists are moving by building and unbuilding um, blocks that are choreographed. So we really wanna encourage you to come out and check out this 
final, he's done two iterations. This will be a final iteration of the project and really culmination of Park Social overall. So that will be happening in Balboa Park at the Velodrome, which is near Morley Field. That will be happening 2 to 5 p.m. on Saturday, November 19th. So mark your calendars. We'll be sending some reminders out via email um, and Instagram. But um, I do want to encourage you all to, to come and, and check that out one last time and just celebrate with us and all of the artists. Um, and then let's go to the next slide. So um, this is now complete. So um, as many of you might recall, um, we, uh, the City of San Diego commissioned artist M.R. Barnadas to create a site-specific mural for the Civic Center concourse, so down near City Hall. So this mural is located at the Civic Center concourse and kind of a pedestrian walkway between Evans Jones Parkade and kind of a vacant, what used to be downtown Johnny Brown's restaurant. So this new mural that has just been finished, is the title of it is, What Do You Want to Remember About Our City? And so the artist um, really, really, um, her real focus was creating a, a mural that was symbolic and really became a municipal heart of our city as, uh, through a really strong local collaboration. So all of the murals imagery and in, the in a transcribed archive of, of local memories that she collected when she was um, kind of artist in residence at the Civic Center back in 2021 last year. So from that information, she's um, she created this imagery that really uh, is a paint by number style and has a lot of futuristic qualities. And again, it was a lot of it was inspired by local collaboration as well as um, she conducted some citywide youth workshop an ongoing collaboration with King Chavez Community High School, which is really just adjacent to this mural. And then she also collaborated on the final installation and production of it with the San Diego Opera Education Department. So as you know, the opera is kind of housed at the Civic Theater down in that um, concourse as well. So she worked with them in a direct partnership to work on the installation um, with the studio artists at the opera, as well as some other local artists and art students. So highly collaborative work. Um, it really creates color in a place that had no color. So we're really excited to um, have this as a new acquisition for the city's collection. And if you haven't been down there in a while, please uh, check it out. And that concludes our updates for today. Thank you very much, Christine, for the report, the friendly reminders, and also the emails of the upcoming project. I think having that out there is, you know, will get more of us to be able to attend in person. Are there any community member reports? If so, please type speak in the chat box and I will call on you. I see none. So finally, Chuck, can you please read any public comment for this item that was submitted in writing and call on any att att attendees that would like to provide comment for this item? Thank you, Chair Opstead. No comment submitted in writing and uh, still currently no attendees. Okay. Thank you very much, Chuck, and thank you, committee members. Our next meeting is planned for December 2nd. Uh, this meeting is officially adjourned at 1029. I want to thank everybody for your support, your hard work, and commitment to this. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Take care. Bye.